Uh, I just want to give you a little bit of kind of context for uh, primitive sets more generally. Uh, another example of a primitive set is a fan favorite for the channel are the perfect numbers. Because they're not odd. So I think you have videos from like 2011, 15, 18. So these are, these are a real crowd pleaser as well. Um, so on the one hand, primitive sets are generalizing the primes in, as we see in this conjecture, but they're also really somehow tied in with a lot of other beautiful mathematics. The ancient Greeks were very interested in numbers that were equal to the sum of their divisors, sum of the proper divisors. So for example, six has a divisors one, two, and three. Okay, we can include six, but we're saying proper. So we'll throw out six itself, and we, we see that one plus two plus three is six back again. So six is a perfect number. There are some fascinating open questions that go back uh, thousands of years about uh, these numbers. What I'm claiming to you, Brady, is that uh, the set of perfect numbers forms a primitive set. Okay. We, we can re revisit this claim if you, if you want to see a proof, but for now, uh, by some kind of historical context, Erdős really introduced uh, the definition of a uh, perfect number, or the definition of a, a primitive set, uh, in order to study perfect numbers. And similarly, its companions, uh, the so-called abundant numbers and deficient numbers, which we may have seen on this channel. So we say that similarly, a number n is abundant if the sum of proper divisors is larger than our number, and deficient if it's smaller, if the sum is smaller. Um, and so Erdős uh, was really interested in looking at kind of the statistics of uh, these numbers. So by introducing this kind of seemingly abstract definition, his work uh, introduced this definition and really opened up this field. And today we know uh, kind of the statistics of perfect numbers, abundant numbers, and deficient numbers. So we know either, let's say, perfect numbers appear on the number line 0% of the time. We know that abundant numbers appear a little less than a quarter of the time. And deficient numbers appear uh, the complement. Uh, so a little bit more than three quarters, so 75.3. So, so in the same way we say that 50% of numbers are even, 50% of numbers are odd, or 10% uh, of numbers have the last digit seven, last digit two, last digit five. Uh, in the same way, using uh, kind of Erdős's uh, ability to kind of abstract away the situation, uh, we now know that we can understand the distribution. So if you pick a number at random, roughly a quarter of the time, the number will be abundant, and roughly three-fourths of the time it'll be deficient. But the perfect numbers, as we've seen, uh, form a vanishingly small uh, set of numbers. Kind of the moral of the story to me is at least that Erdős really had this ability to take what could be appearing as, as a very complicated situation and kind of extract the, the bare minimum uh, basic information to really understand what's going on. Looking at perfect, abundant, deficient numbers, which have gone back thousands of years, uh, this really led to uh, kind of opening up the, the field and uh, he then was you know, studying these problems for their own sake. Lots of the Erdos conjectures have prizes and checks and things you could win. Do you win anything for uh, this Erdos conjecture that you cracked? So this particular conjecture uh, was made in uh, his later years in, in, in the 80s. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, there's any prize bounty uh, for this particular conjecture, but other uh, still open problems relating to primitive sets, for example, back in the 60s that he had, uh, still have, a, uh, have an open prize bounty that um, I'm uh, keen on. <laughs> and one last thing, what's your Erdos number? Uh, two. Well, he's sat there doodling during this boring lecture, and he's writing out the numbers. Let's do 30, 31, 32. The next thing he did was start to circle the prime numbers. 